Have you ever wondered how anyone could create a machine as complex as the internal combustion engine or the International Space Station or perhaps the Large Hadron Collider? Certainly, hard work and money were influential factors in the creation of these amazing machines. But the most critical factor, one without which the others would be useless, was of course innovation. All these great technologies started as mere ideas in the minds of innovators. So, what makes an innovator think differently from the rest of us? I have been giving some thought to this topic and the first question I asked myself was, how would I innovate? That got me thinking on what I already do. At any given point in time, I have multiple home projects going on, mostly based on science. In June 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic was in full swing, I educated myself about the way it spreads. One of the main factors is touching your face, which many people do subconsciously. While everyone was warning children not to touch their faces, I decided to make a simple COVID-19 smart alarm that consisted of a gravity switch and a buzzer. You could wear like a watch that buzzes every time you lift your hand to touch your face. Here, I applied known concepts to new problem areas. Another such example is my homemade bulletproof vest. While reading about new and interesting scientific phenomena, I came across non-Newtonian fluids, which are fluids that change their viscosity based on the force applied on them. This led me to an idea of a bulletproof vest coated in a non-Newtonian fluid. Such a vest would be able to absorb the impact of a projectile while also being comfortable to wear. My bulletproof vest has a long way to go for practical application, but conceptually has a few advantages over traditional bulletproof vests. My third and final example is my Arduino-based floor cleaning robot, which I made to get around the cleaning chores assigned to me during the COVID-19 pandemic. This project failed multiple times, but I didn't give up because I hate doing chores. In the end, I managed to get the bot working. While cleaning robots do exist and are available in the market, they are pretty expensive. By creating the cleaning robot, I managed to lower the cost significantly while providing most of the basic functionality. Though not disruptive, it was in its own way a small innovation. After engaging in many such home projects, here is what I feel the process of innovation is. The first thing to do is to find a field that piques your interest. Next, look for a problem in that field which you think you can solve. If this problem hasn't been previously solved, you need to think out of the box. This requires a broad understanding of the field. The ability to connect the dots to apply knowledge from one area to another is also essential. If this problem has an existing solution, but it's expensive, the first thing to do is to break down the existing solution into its base components and analyze it carefully. See if you can substitute the tricky parts with some easily available, inexpensive parts. This is where the knowledge of your field comes into play. After that, there isn't much left to do. Get building. Problems will undoubtedly arise. It is important not to give up at this stage. Go back to first principles and analyze your prototype. Over multiple iterations, the design will get better and eventually you will have your solution. Though my home projects have been educational and fun, they haven't yet had a larger impact. But now, let me brief you on some innovations that change the world. Jennifer Doudna, the pioneer of CRISPR gene editing, Nikola Tesla, the game-changing inventor of the induction motor Tesla coil and the Tesla turbine. And Steve Jobs, the visionary who revolutionized the tech industry. These are some of the innovators who directly or indirectly brought about exceptional technological advancements. Though these innovations are the most well-known, they are not the only kind. Like my cleaning robot, merely making a solution more accessible by either reducing the cost or increasing the availability is also an innovation. These are called frugal innovations. The Foldscope, a $1 microscope made by Manu Prakash. The Jaipur Leg, a low-cost prosthetic leg made by Dr. P.K. Sethi. 
these are just a few examples of this type of innovation. I am just 30 and haven't yet had the chance to participate in disruptive technological innovations. But I believe that building knowledge in your field of interest, identifying a problem, thinking differently and being able to connect the dots are factors crucial to innovation, whether big or small. Most importantly, stay inquisitive and never ever give up. As Thomas Edison once said, there's a way to do it better. Find it. Thank you all for listening.